Alright guys, so we are here in Germany, a very, very muddy Germany that is. It is time for the MXGP of Tuchenthal. I probably butchered that name, but I butcher most of the MXGP track names because they are wildest. Now it never seems to fail. We always seem to be struck with a little bit of rain, whether it be in qualifying or throughout the motos. Here in my MXGP 2020 MX2 career mode playthrough as I run into the back of Olsen I'm just really trying to like get around him here but slow line on that outside he's actually pulling away a little bit I did sign with Monster Energy Yamaha for this video so the setup is on point this is episode 15 out of 17 in this career mode so things are slowly but surely coming to a close in this championship. This series has been a ton of fun so far, so if you guys have been enjoying, go down there and smash that thumbs up button for me. Let me know for a question of the video. If you guys have any series ideas or anything like that. If I were to keep MXGP 2020 here on the channel, what kind of videos would you guys want to see? Let me know in the comments below whether it's, you know, crazy challenges or just simple tips and tricks. Let me know in the comments down below. My MXGP 2020 videos have really been locked in on career mode and I'm feeling like you guys might want a little bit of a switch up. So yeah, if you guys have any video ideas, drop them in the comments down below. Click that subscribe button if you guys are new around here. Help me out on the road to 24,000 subscribers. The goon army is strong. Now as we come up over this finish line, I am just gonna pause and I do want to take a moment to hop into photo mode, check out the setup, and take a moment to say I am currently running a giveaway over on the Once Company Instagram. I know you guys have probably already heard it, but as of this video going live, there is a giveaway running on the Once Company Insta. For those of you that don't know about the Once Company, I'm basically trying to start a brand rather than just putting out merch. So the Once Company is a brand I'm trying to start. It stands for Oppose Nothing, Conquer Everything, Take On Everything Life Throws At You, and Crush Those Goals. It's basically a life motto. Anything is possible. It's up to you to put in the work and make it happen. So I just figured I would mention that I am running a giveaway over on the Once Insta. All the links are down down below in the description and I don't want you guys to miss out so if you do want to get involved follow once on Instagram and check out the most recent post to get yourselves entered in all of the support is greatly greatly appreciated it does mean a ton and yeah with all that being said let's get in to the MXGP of Germany action So this is a muddy, muddy, muddy timed qualifying session right now, and I'm not really too concerned about hitting a decent lap, because I feel like the track is about to be totally different when it comes to race time. The rain definitely throws an interesting mix into the scene when you're trying to hit decent laps and run some quick laps, but yeah, I think I am A-OK -okay to end qualifying here. I still actually ran a sixth place lap time. That's not too bad. I'm like 0.7 of a second off of the fastest time, so that is a pretty big difference, but it's something I can work with. So we're heading into the qualifying race. This first race that you guys are about to witness here is actually just for gate pick for moto number one. I really look at it as the first session there was kind of practice, this here is really your qualifying. Depending on how you finish in this race, that gets you your gate pick for moto number one. And then of course, moto number one is the first race that actually counts for points. So let's go gate drop time. I wanna see if I can get out front and maybe hit the jets on these guys. Just like that. Full shot master, baby, let's go. Finding that flow, just like I said, I think the rain likes to come out to play just just because it has to it's an mxgp race it has to rain at least once throughout the day the dry weather is here it looks like the sky is clear and the sun is shining here in germany so it's time to attack the track here in tuchenthal see if i can actually hit some decent laps find that flow and prep for that first moto head start 
<laughs> I don't know what just happened there, but that was wild. I don't think I had any control on uh, me going off track there. Next thing you know, I was just completely sideways and off track and reset. So a few potential passes here to get myself back up into that lead, which might not necessarily be a bad thing. I can kind of scope out some passing opportunities and see where I can actually gain time on the AI for moto number one. It looks like Olsen is in P2 and then my teammate Gertz out front holding it down right now. I'm gonna rail around this outside and I wonder if I can get this triple down on the 250. I feel like it might actually be tough to make that line work, but it's one thing about this qualifying session is it's all about trying to figure stuff out, find lines that work and learn. If you're not learning during qualifying, I don't think you're doing qualifying right. Like, it's not about going as quick as you can for as long as you can. That's the race time when you need that to come into play. Here in qualifying, it's okay to slow things down, learn the track a little bit, and figure out some lines. Because it is showtime in Moto1. Qualifying is just qualifying, man. It would be a nice confidence booster if I could get up here and actually get into the lead just kind of prove to myself that it is possible and it is doable to beat these guys battling with Olsen right now kind of hitting a funky line through here you can send this jump but it's risk versus reward it's pretty easy to end up jumping a little too far landing a little funky and ending up on the ground Gertz my teammate is out front right now I'm not sure what the best line is through here I'm in third gear. I think if I rail that corner in third, I might actually be able to make that triple down work. And then I launch that wall. I get a lot of airtime off of that wall jump there. And I don't know if it's actually quicker. Getting the pass on Gertz just like that around his inside into that lead. Two laps to go here in this race. So two laps to find that flow and hopefully bring this one home. So a pretty uneventful race. Once I got into the lead there, just kind of smooth sailing, bringing this one home. Finding some fast lines, you can almost get that triple. You have to be like perfect with your shifting to make that triple happen. These inside lines are so fun. This is such a fun track. Germany is definitely one of the better tracks in the game, in my opinion, but let's go. Coming up across that finish line, checkered flag has flown. P1 in that qualifying race, that means first gate pick for the first moto can't complain about that. Okay, since we are closing out this championship, this is one of the final three rounds within this series. Starting off this first moto here, I am giving these guys a 10 second head start. So 250 on that timer in the top left, and that was my cue to attack the track. These guys are gone right now. It is my job to put in a comeback charge and get up to the front of this field. Each moto, I'm actually going to increase the head start challenge from here till the end of the championship. So this moto was 10 seconds. Next race is going to be 15. And then when we go to the next round, moto one will then be 20 seconds, so on and so forth until we end out this championship. I have a decent amount of points to play with, so I figured it would be a fun way to keep it entertaining and spice things up as we work our way towards that final round. I know we're here in Germany and I am getting kind of ahead of myself talking about the next two rounds, but I believe the next round is in... Oh man, that literally stopped, stopped me dead. Train of thought out the door. What just happened in that section? Like, how did I whip? Someone explain. Now, no matter how I do here in this race, whether I make my way up into the top five whether i finish here in last place no matter what no matter what the outcome is in moto 2 we are upping the ante to that 15 second head start so it doesn't matter if i win or lose this could definitely be costly if i have bad rounds from here to the end of this championship like i said i do have a big points lead but not like a huge points lead i do have to at least pull off some decent finishes to hold on to that red plate. I'm back here in 20th place, slowly but surely catching up to these guys. I'm surprised that with that crash on the last lap, I'm still right here in the mix. I don't know what to do through this section. It is survival mode through that section, especially if 
The whip animation is gonna come out to play and just bite ya. Oh, I'm off track. Oh my goodness. Don't know how I'm still on two wheels. I clipped something on the side of the track there and definitely thought I was going down, but here we go. The passes are starting to flow. It looks like Fernandez next on the list. These guys are all hitting cheeky lines through there. I like it. So I'm into 16th place right now, trailing behind Hofer. Are you, are you serious? Are you actually serious? That's how I'm throwing this one down the drain. It's just all the little things in this game that come out to be so, so costly. Like I drifted a little wide in that corner, caught a weird edge on the side of the track and there was like nothing I could do there. Nothing I could do to save that crash. As soon as I caught that edge, I was sleeping on the ground. So I was up to like 16th place working on that top 15. As of right now, I'm just gonna try and at least make a few passes happen between now and that checkered flag. I do have two laps to go, so like a lap and a half remaining. Fernandez, I need to get by you as quick as possible. He drifted that whole entire corner. I don't know if you guys caught that, but the man is on one. I know I can cut the track right there. Maybe I should start using that cheater line. To my advantage drop down here I'm in 18th place so that crash was definitely costly in this first moto kind of fell apart this corner costing me a ton of time last lap I should have just hit the inside there was a big group of guys going to the inside and I kind of thought hey I can go to the outside and maybe avoid them and uh, it ended up being super super costly so on the last lap in 17th place right now i am in salvage mode i would take the 17th over last so no mistakes no going down and there is a little group here in front of me that i can try to actually focus on and maybe get past we got moose dick holfer and a few other guys right in front of them so let's go this last lap charge i did the same thing earlier in the race so i gotta remember moto 2 is about to be a moto of redemption, that's for sure. I have learned a lot here in this first moto. So that 15 second head start, we are getting that done. I am determined. 15th place on this last lap, Moostick made easy work of Hofer. And he's actually working his way up towards the front of the field. I wanna see if I can get him behind me and get 14th place in this race, that would be ideal. I don't know if it's worth it to go to this outside and gain speed to try and make this quad because I can barely make the quad. Moostick goes down just like that into 14th place. Let's go. Hit this inside and we are bringing home not an amazing finish by any means but a decent finish with all things considered. Coming across 14th place. Oh, live and learn, I guess, right? So race number two, we are on the gate. It is about to drop. 15 second head start going to these guys here in race number two. I'm determined to get this one done. Race one there was definitely a big old learning process. And I think if I just ride smart here in race number two, the 15 second head start challenge is going to be possible. I think I could even get up there and battle for the win as long as I don't go down and I make no mistakes. So I don't wanna jinx myself. I'm just gonna ride smart, try to be smooth on the throttle and not get squirrely with it. Like, I don't know, some silly, silly mistakes there in race one that could have easily been avoided if I just rode a little bit more smart, a little more on the cautious side, I guess I could say, so slow things down in order to go a little bit quicker here in Germany. I am about it. So one lap in the bag, not officially one lap, but one full loop around the track and I'm still in 20th, but slowly but surely closing in on the guys in front of me here. So I'm beyond pumped on that. Just a little bit more patience and I will be up there making passes. Closing out this first lap with a decent lap time, not a super fast lap, but it's not always about hitting those qualifying lap times here in the race. Sometimes it's all about keeping it on two wheels and not going down, am I right? So 
28 seconds on the clock. I think that means three laps to go here in Germany. I need to start making some passes as quick as possible here in this race. So up to the back of the field, I think first passes are probably going to happen like right here. Can I hug this inside? Not quick enough. Down into this inside. Oh, I am bodying my way into 19th place. Making some more passes on this raised corner. Let's go. Progress towards the front of that field. That's what I like to see. A big old cheater line right there. Don't tell the Supercross. The Supercross, man. We're out here in MXGP. Don't tell the MXGP officials I'm out here cutting the track or else they are about to be cheesed, you know? I'm still surprised that that cut line still exists. There are so many cut lines that would probably take Milestone a couple hours max to fix, but here we are months into this game and you can still just completely cut the track in certain sections. It's not bad in certain spots, say where the track is flat and you can kind of just go off track a little bit. That's not too too bad, but when there are literally obstacles you can avoid and just completely skip sections of the track, like you would think they would probably want to fix that, but I guess not. I've had a few people ask me about MXGP and updates and stuff like that and I personally think that with Supercross 3, Supercross 3, with Supercross 4 being so close to release, I honestly think our updates for MXGP 2020 are pretty much done. I think they are going to be rare, and if we do get any, and, 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 any updates, <laughs> English is tough, man. Crash penalty coming into play, man. Things are just going south in this race. I wasn't even on the gas there. They were just hitting me, giving me that boost. Sanyo Gunzig, you gotta go, man. So I do think if we get any updates here for MXGP 2020, they aren't going to be like huge updates that are game changing. I think it'll just be like little tweaks here and there now. We're going on to the last lap here and I'm in 17th place. This race starting to look a lot like the last race there, which is brutal. I find it crazy that Catching up to the back of the field isn't necessarily the hard part, it's progressing your way through the field and getting up into those top spots that proves to be difficult. When the track's clear and you can pretty much just flow, hit your own lines, you can gain a ton of time on the AI, but when you have people like that diving into your lines and getting in your way, it definitely makes things a little more difficult. and. Yeah, I don't know, that crash in literally that corner last lap cost me way too much time, but... I'm in 16th place, so I did salvage a little bit- Oh, I'm crashing. There's no way I'm still on two wheels, man. There is no way. 15th place, let's go! Can I go 14-14 on the day if I can get Fernandez up here? I am gonna just rail this outside in second gear, stretch out this double. I'm not letting off through this section. Let's go. Jump into this inside. Lock up the brakes. <gasps> no way that just happened. Fernandez battling back in that last corner. Bumping me back to 15th place. What an episode, man. What an episode. Goon moments. Goon laps just a whole lot of goonage here in germany i think this right here might have actually been my favorite moment of the race i triple down get a killer drive bank off of fernandez to get a killer drive into this corner got the pass but he said not today not today man and he just comes on swinging to pass me back right before the finish line too like that was perfect. Textbook performance by the AI, am I right? It looks like I managed to get a terrible overall result on the day. 14-15 for 14th overall. I only got 13 points to my name from this round here in Germany. I have 274 points to my name and a big old points lead right now. I'm not sure what goes on with the scoring system, but the points that you guys just saw there are completely different from the actual point standings here 
appear within the menus. If I come down to the standings and take a look, I'm up at like 505 points. 45 point lead over Harup. I don't really know which one to trust. I could lose the points lead in the little screen it shows you after the race, but then still have the points lead here in the standings. So the game's broken. Two rounds remaining. In the next one, we are heading to China, the MXGP of Shanghai. That track is actually really fun on a 125, so I feel like it's time for some two-stroke redemption in China. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you guys all in the next one. Peace out.